Okay. Yeah, I like to uh, show you something which I discovered, or not really discovered, but uh, made two years ago at my former employer. And that is compile time checking your user defined literals. If you're using user defined literals, I recommend that, by the way, try to compile time check them. And I will demonstrate that here why this is important. Um, for example, oh, by the way, if you want to look at this afterwards, here's the Godbolt link where you can find these and you can play around with that. Uh, at my former uh, employer, Benox, there we are, uh, there we did a lot of stuff with networking. And so we had our own type for IP four addresses. Uh, here's a simplified version of it. It's just a simple wrapper around a uint 32 bit um, integer. And it's, of course, it has uh, these four components for an IP address. And um, what we like to have, especially in unit tests, is very often that we wanted to write something like that instead of writing an IP address type and then somehow knowing what the hex code is for that or so that, that we get this. So we wanted to have some constants and user-defined literals is great for that. So we would define our own type here, IPv4 it's called, and you can write something like that. And that is perfect. And uh, you can also print it like that and uh, it compiles. And everything is fine, we thought. At the beginning, we, by the way, implemented this, um, the, the function signature of such a, uh, such a user-defined literal looks like that. And we implemented that by parsing this string using, I think, IO stream, um, uh, et cetera. And so everything was done at runtime. It was fine, especially at the time when we implemented the original version, which was, I think, around 2013 or so. And um, but we realized that we got some problems, especially for example, if you are uh, having something like that here, you are uh, writing uh, an IP address type which is not valid. You might know 255 is the highest number you can have for one of these four blocks here, these groups, and this one indeed is not a uh, valid IP address. And so, uh, yeah, you might have other versions here, for example. Uh, you are missing one of the uh, the numbers or the entire group, or you're writing an additional group there, or you are uh, yeah, doing some nonsense like an empty string literal there, or even if you wanted to do something like that, uh, adding some extra zeros, this should be fine, but we didn't like that. And as you noticed, the compiler is compiling this happily, but if you try to uh, execute this code, you then realize, oh, uh, this is not valid. Only the first thing here is valid, uh, here, the output. But the other ones throw exceptions um, from the implementation. And um, that was not nice, because we wanted to do that at compile time. That would, be, would have been better. And luckily, later, with uh, const extra uh, simplification for const extra, we were able to do that. And it's even better with C++20 with const eval. So uh, now uh, I implemented it uh, differently that I use here some uh, parser function, which is entirely const expert or in C++20 const eval. And uh, if I encounter something which is not valid, then I throw these yeah, exceptions here. It's just a string literal so that I uh, can use it during compile time. Or oh, by the way, the throwing in from a const expression is not uh, valid, so uh, this um, cannot be evaluated during C, uh, in C17 during uh, compile time. So that's why we're getting this here at runtime. But um, for uh, C20, we, when we use that, you see, oh, it's not even compiling. And why is that? Because it evaluates this at runtime. And so I get here some nice uh, output saying, what did I do wrong? Okay, here for this one version, I threw, uh, I threw because this is uh, not a, not a valid IP address because I'm uh, have an invalid number in the group, the invalid number I had. Uh, where is it here? Two hundred fifty-six. Uh, the next one saying, oh, it's a missing number. Yeah, that's what we have here, and uh, here there's not even uh, entire group for the number missing. So the dot. Here we have some additional tokens at the end, and. For all these things, I get these uh, error messages now at run at compile time, and that's what I really want because 
although most of these things were, uh, would have been used in unit tests, we don't want to have the unit test failing just because we wrote it wrong and we want to capture uh, these errors early. So I recommend do that. Try to um, to uh, check your, your um, string literals during compile time. And if you're interested how this is done here, how I did this, uh, you can look through the implementation. As I said, the link is here. Just one note, you can even get this to uh, check during uh, compile time for C++ uh, 17. If you are uh, calling this from an um, const expression context, and this is, for example, a static assert, and uh, then you realize um, that here it's uh, complaining because this here uh, says it's not a, uh, uh, not a constant expression anymore. Why is that? Because it, I threw something from a const expr uh, function, but in the next error message, it tells me what I threw and why and what the error is. So even if you don't are not able to use C++ 20 and a const eval capable compiler, you can uh, luckily also get this if you call this from a static assert, for example. But still, it's nicer if you use C++20 because then you just get the important stuff there. And that's all I wanted to say. So uh, test your uh, string literals at, at compile time. And if you haven't used any, maybe you should. They are pretty cool. Thank you.